I introduced myself to you earlier at the swim event. Yes, you know, you yes I like that. Thank you so much for having done the general part of the examination. I would like now like to examine your tummy just to see if everything is fine with your digestive system. Would that be all right? Yes, please. I don't think so. That would involve me feeling the tummy and also listening to it. Right. Excellent. I'm just going to wash my hands and I do apologize, my hands are a bit of a cold start no, today. Fine. I'll try and warm them up as best I can as I go along. Now, firstly, I'm just noticing that you don't seem to be in any pain. Am I right to go yes, with that? Right. Because people in pain you know, are very, very still, or sometimes they cold up into a ball, so you seem to be quite comfortable in terms of your tummy and okay. All right. So, firstly, I'm going to have a look. I notice a scar here on the abdomen. What happened there? This one, yeah, this one. Yeah, that, that would move my gallbladder. Your gallbladder. Yes. And this scar here? This is appendix. That took your appendix yes. out as well. Yes. Okay. Now I just want to ask if you can just, um, just pull your trust down ever so slightly, just that we can see the whole tummy. Yeah, that's perfect, perfect. All right. So I'm looking, I don't notice any masses, any lumps, for instance, like any hernias. I don't see any enlarged organs at all. I don't see distension of the, of the abdomen at all present. I'm also looking at the umbilicus. I don't see any abnormal nodules there. I don't see bruising that would be suggestive of any pancreatitis. I don't see any abnormal veins. And I also don't see pulsations. And sometimes it's possible you can actually see the bowels moving, but I don't see any peristalsis present there at all. Um, looking at the abdomen as well, I don't see a stoma. Sometimes when people have uh, their bowel part of it removed, they make it a stoma, but there's no stoma present here with you. All right, so I'm going to move on now to the next step, uh, which is I'm going to feel the tummy. So as I said, I'm trying to, to make my hands as warm as I possibly can. And then I'm just going to lightly touch all the parts of your tummy. And you see there's no, no way that's sore. No way sore. So if you tell me that that part is sore, I would usually start in the other areas and then get to the sore part last. But seeing as no, no part is sore, it doesn't really matter where I start. So I'm going to start here on the right lower side, so in the right iliac fossa. And I just feel very lightly over all the areas. And I note that there's no tenderness, there's no rigidity, and there's also no guarding. So guarding is repeated. Mr. Peter was going to try and prevent me from feeling. But just on feeling, I can conclude that there is no guarding, no rigidity, and no tenderness. And now, just to be complete, I'm going to just let go here of the tummy and check for rebound tenderness, and there is no rebound tenderness. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to feel a little bit deeper for all the different organs. So, first, I'm going to start feeling for the liver, and I start here in the right iliac fossa again and I'm just going to gently move my hand up and I'm going to ask you to take a nice deep breath for me okay out and again okay and out and once more okay so when he breathes in you can breathe out <laughs> okay when he breathes in then the liver comes down but I couldn't feel his liver on the patient now and now I'm next going to feel if I can feel the spleen. So some spleens can become really large and they, they uh, enlarge in this direction. So I'm going to start again in the right iliac fossa and I'm just going to feel up in that direction. Tell me at any point if it's uncomfortable. And take a nice deep breath for me. And once more. And I cannot feel any um, enlargement there of the spleen. What we're going to feel from next is just going to feel here above the umbilicus, okay, just about three centimeters above. I'm just going to put my fingers down there and feel for the palpation of our feel for the pulsation of the aorta and I can feel it but it's not causing um, my fingers to move from each other, so it's not expensive, so we're not worried there about the normal 
and the other side. So next I'm going to feel for the bladder, so if the bladder enlarges it's usually in this direction, so we're going to start, and I'm going to start feeling above the enlargement and going downwards towards the pubic bone, and I do not feel any enlargement there. So that concludes the deep palpation then of the abdomen, but the last part that we want to do that is not strictly palpation, but it's called pelotti, is when I'm going to put one hand at the back and one hand at the front, and if someone has enlarged kidneys, what will happen is that will feel like there's a fluid fall down the ball between the two hands. So at the same time, I'm going to move my back the hand at the back and the hand at the front towards each other, just in a swift motion, I hope that's not letting you at all, and that's called the loading of the kidney. And if the kidney is enlarged, you can feel that it is um, actually bouncing against your hand. I couldn't feel that, but I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I move both hands towards each other, and I cannot feel any bouncing of the kidney against my hands. What I'm going to do, what we're going to do right at the end, which, what I will show is also how to check renal angle tenderness. But now we're going to move on to um, the percussion of the abdomen. So for percussion, we're also going to percuss the same organs. I'm going to start again with the liver, and I'm going to start in the right ear for some, and I'm just going to tap with my fingers in your belly. And then you can hear that is resonant throughout, ne? indicating air, and there's no organ enlargement. When we come to the level, what we can also do, if I'm just ask you to lift your arm up for me, you can also percuss from the top, and then when it becomes dull, right? So I'm just going to put this tape over there, put the measuring cap, and this is where we're working here on in the uh, mid axillary line, and I'm going to measure from the top to where I put here the resonance disappearing at the bottom, and I can measure that the level is 12 centimeters, which is within normal limits. So I put good news, your level is not enlarged. Thank you. All right. Then after that, I'm also going to percuss towards the spleen, which percusses resonant. Now what's different about the spleen is that the percussion remains resonant above the rib border. So when you go above the rib, it stays resonant because the spleen is actually a lot smaller than the rib. Then I'm going to now percuss for the bladder. So again, I'm going to start above the umbilicus and go downwards. Okay, and I think there is a, might be a little bit of, uh, of water in the bladder at the moment, but it's definitely not enlarged. And what we can find in practice sometimes is that people can get urine retention and that the bladder can enlarge um, above the umbilicus. Right. Also, don't forget that you could find in the in the abdomen that they might be in women. You could actually feel um, that they are pregnant, and you can measure the size um, of the uterus as well. Okay, so now we've done our we've done our palpation, we've done our inspection, our palpation, our percussion, and the last part of percussion is where we're going to be looking for free fluids. So if someone has a situs of the abdomen then there are certain tests we can do to look for that. So the first one that I want you to do is just to put your hand from the over here, okay? And it has to be the patient's hand, because if you put your own hand there, then you're not going to be able to feed on the other side for the fluid flow. So if there's free fluid, what will happen is you will flip the abdomen this side and you will feed it that side. But if there's no free fluid, then nothing will happen. Okay, so I'm just going to Put my hand there ready to feel, and I'm going to just do a light flick on this side, and there was no fluid flow. So, why did I have to ask Mr. Peter, you can raise your hand? Why did I have to ask him to put his hand there? It's so that that flow doesn't go through the subcutaneous tissue there, but that it actually goes through the free fluid if there is free fluid present. Now, the second part is what we call shifting dullness. That can be quite difficult to understand. But if I can encourage you, once you've got your first patient with ascites, it will suddenly all click into place. So now I'm just going to um, show you how to do that. 
right? So what you do is you're going to go into the middle of the abdomen where is the maximum tympani, and then you're going to percuss until you get dullness. So remember, it is the panic because of the bowel steam moving to the top, and now if the person, you know, you ask the person to, to turn for you, to, if I can ask you now uh, to turn to that side for me, I'm just going to hold my hand here. Yeah, are you comfortable there, oh, yeah. Mr. Peter? Okay. So now, the, if there's free fluid, now the fluid is going to move and the bowel is going to come to the top of it. So we don't have, so if it is true that there, there's free fluid, then this place where it start, where it changed from resonant to dull is going to is going to change. And this is going to now be resonant. But if it remains dull, then there is no free fluid. Right. So we just keep it a little bit longer, and then I'm going to tap it in. And it remains dull, so we know that there is no free fluid in that. Thing. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Peter. You can now your back again for me. So this concludes inspection, and palpation, and percussion, and now we're going to move on to auscultation. And before your auscultation, also we always remember just to clean your stethoscope nicely to keep it safe for your patient. And I'm going to listen for bell sounds now. And ideally, I always want to listen underneath the level of the. So, you can only conclude that there are no bell sounds after four minutes. There, there are bell sounds present. Next, I'm going to listen uh, about three centimeters above the umbilicus to hear if I can hear any Greek of the aorta, which I cannot hear. So if there's a narrowing of aorta, you will be able to hear it. Or any turbulent flow of blood. And the superolateral of the umbilicus, about 5 centimeters. We're going to listen for renal breed, which thankfully are not present. Now, if, you cannot, if you can't feel a level or a spleen, you can also listen over the enlarged organ for venous hums, but if you don't feel any enlarged organs, you do not need to worry yourself about that. If I can now ask Mr. Peter, I want to show them the last part of the examination, if that's all right. So if you could just sit up for me with your legs dangling here over the side, I'm just going to show them, so if you face a little bit more towards me, right? I'm just going to show them where the renal angle tenderness is and tell me if it's sore for you at all. So you're just going to go where the uh, where the rib margin is, you see where it intersects, intersects with your spine, and then you're just going to just do a light little bunch there. You can see it's not using any force as they're creating you at all. So when someone is piling the front, when they put kidney infection, that could be very sore for you. All right. Mr. Peter, thank you so much. I'm going to wash my hands again now. And then you can get dressed, and my conclusion is that everything is fine with your digestive system. I could not find anything at normal when I was looking at it, feeling it, when I was discussing, or when I was listening. And then, um, ideally, in our hospital, if we did find anything wrong, or we wanted to be thorough, we would also recommend doing a urine test, rectal examination, and specific examination if there were any hand. Right, but thank you very much. Okay, good news. Thank, thank you, you. Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.